A few years ago, Russia invented a new kind of military force, parachute troops, who could be dropped by plane over enemy territory to attack in the rear, create panic, and commit sabotage. Many smiled at the idea, but the France of those days, never slow to try anything new, took up troops into the air and let them down. Then Germany set about training paratroops on the grand scale, which aided them in the Nazi policy of aggression. Followed the United States, which gave them the once over and set out to train a parachute army. And then, to the delight of we ordinary blokes of Britain, came the news that we have our own paratroops. In fact, they've already given Italy a pain in a foot. Makes you think, don't it? There's a funny side to all this grim business. Hitler actually accuses Britain of infringing his patent. I suppose it is his patent since he only pinched the idea. And now with pleasure, we present the first pictures of British paratroops in the making and made. Of course, a big consideration is physical fitness. The men must be as hard as steel. It's no good trying to scotch Hitler's war machine with wooden pegs. They're fine chaps before they start their physical training course, and when they finish, they are, without doubt, the finest body of men in the universe. Part of their early training is on a scaffold which simulates the landing force equal to a drop of 10 feet. The art of falling correctly is also made from dummy traps, a further step in the method of effecting a safe landing. The parachutist must also be able to operate his parachute in the air. The elementary stages are done in a hangar. He can, to some extent, direct it in order to counter excessive swing and avoid falling on trees or overhead power lines. The air soldier and his parachute are part and parcel of one another. He studies and even helps in the folding and packing of his four-ply silk canopy with its 24 silken shroud lines. He learns to know more about it than the temperament of his girlfriend. his life will virtually hang on silken threads, the strength of the apparatus is truly remarkable. Tested and then tested again, it'll never let him down, if you follow what I mean. So with his pack securely attached, he signs the logbook confirming that the job is well and truly done. A gondola attached to a barrage balloon will give the trainees their first experience of bailing out. Before they make the drop into the thin air, each man checks his neighbor's pack. Rather like, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. And now all aboard the Skylark, and in a few minutes they'll know the thrill of rushing through air in that first drop before the chute opens, which makes you feel as if you've left your innards behind. He comes sailing down to Mother Earth at about 16 feet a second. Behind him come his brother troopers. There's always that little doubt in their minds, will it open? But as they're brought up with a jolt by the opening silk, they give themselves a mental kick in the pants for the thought. The failure of a modern shoot to work is practically unknown. They put all the theory they've been taught into practice as they hit the ground and set about taking the wind out of the great envelopes. Then at long last comes the day when they'll make their first drop from a bomber or troop transport plane. This time they're going a lot higher up than the balloon took them. Assembled on the drome, giant Whitleys, Wellingtons or Ansons, a variety of aircraft may be used, are charged with their human cargoes. Outwardly calm and businesslike, inwardly excited but cool-headed, the men are doing justice to their training. Now the engines are revved up for the takeoff and the sky adventure has begun in earnest. Whisked away like a leaf in an autumn gale comes number one sailing to earth, while others follow in quick succession. Rapidly through their minds flash the instructions and drill movements of bygone days. Drift, direction control, landing rolls and operational duties. It's all got to be right.
Silently floating to earth like thistledown, men of Britain's new airborne army are being trained to perfection in the science of war from the air. It can now be disclosed that British paratroops who are practicing dropping from the skies and seizing or damaging key points behind the enemy lines, even when we were expecting to be invaded last summer. Before taking to the air, the harness release mechanism is given final inspection. The inspector in turn having his harness checked by the last man in the rear file. The equipment the men will use is already aboard. This is dropped in containers by coloured parachutes at the same time as the men. You'll see several of these coming down later on. Well, boys, it's time to be off. At the end of this ride, you'll be the real thing. Now, away you go. Take it easy, driver. They have a long way to fall. How are you feeling, boys? Rather stuffing in here, eh? Yeah, it is a bit far down. Watch it, boys. It won't be long now. The signal to stand by. This must be where they get off. OK, fellas, remember you've done it before. There she goes. Now watch the sky fill with a mass of white and coloured puffs. One of the best kept secrets of the war is out. Paratroops and British. They've already won their spurs in action, and maybe it won't be so long before we turn round.